this is not the video I was going to make. I had drawn this cool astronaut's bedroom using one point perspective, and I had lots of cool little details in it. I even tried out a few color schemes to try and find one that would work, but in the end, it ended up like this. It's not terrible, but it's not quite the result I was hoping for. So I tried out isometric perspective instead. That's where you take a grid like this and add in buildings using all parallel lines. It's nice because you don't need to crack your head open with a million lines coming from all over the place. Everything follows the same perspective. I didn't film the outlining process for this video, partly because I didn't know it'd end up as complex as it did, and partly because when I'm drawing small details instead of drawing like this, it's more like this. Which you can imagine does not make for the best camera view. So anyways, I started drawing and then it was five hours later and this had happened. What the heck? It was already midnight by this point, but I figured I would paint in just the red bits and call it a day. I started off with the Pièce de Résistance, the Ladybug Hotel, because it was the first building that I drew and I really liked the shape of it. It's exactly the kind of weird wobbly place I would have loved to live in when I was a kid. And let's face it, I still would. Behind it we've got silverfish seafood. You do not want to know what's in their fish sticks. Just trust me on that one. I don't actually know what kind of building the ant farm is, but I imagine it's some sort of office building where people work like... like um... Like bees! I heard their boss is a real piece of work. Every time he comes in, they get antsy. Yeah, okay. And then I went, no, that's not red enough, and that's not red enough. Watercolor dries lighter, you see, so a lot of the times it looks really bright and vibrant while you're painting it. And then it dries and you're like, oh. You can do things like add in gum arabic, which makes the painting look shiny and therefore more vibrant even after it's dry. The problem with that is that then you're never sure if it's dry or not, which makes you want to touch it. Constantly. And if it isn't dry, you end up with paint all over yourself. And then people go, What's that red on your hand? Did you cut yourself? Are you okay? And you have to explain that no, I'm fine. I just have the patience of a two-year-old. I suspect the giant lollipops on top of caterpillar candies are made of plastic. Disappointing. There's a lot of fun buildings here like Pizza Papillon, or Poison Frog Inc. I don't know what they do either, but they're probably evil. Pizza Papillon was good though. Pizza is always good. You can't really get your cheese fix anywhere else in the city. They need an Italian restaurant like you would not believe. And here I mixed up some green for Trico, not related to the Pokemon. I would also like to draw your attention to the fact that I did, in fact, mix my own green instead of using the one straight from the pan. You may have also realized by now that the video has not cut, even though I said I was just going to do the red because it was rapidly approaching stupid o'clock in the morning, and green is not red. Yet here we are. The problem is, coloring this was really fun, and I didn't want to stop. I wanted to see what it would look like when it was done, and I was too impatient to wait until morning. Plus I was listening to this podcast called The Habitat, which was about six people who go up in some volcanoes in Florida to lock themselves in a small building for a year and simulate what it would be like for potential future missions to Mars. They were only allowed to leave if they had their pretend spacesuits on, otherwise they would all have to pretend to decompress and die. It was really interesting to listen to and it gave me some good ideas for a fanfic that I'm writing. So I had something fun to listen to and something fun to look at, along with something for my hands to do, so I was pretty thoroughly entertained and I didn't want to sleep. I didn't really notice the time getting away from me, so it was pretty late by the time I stopped. I don't know what kind of permits Caterpillar Candies needed to open, but they are very well located. They're right next to the school and the park. Kids could come, have their picnic, and go buy $60 worth of Jelly Bellies without even having to cross the street. Don't tell the local residents, but I'm pretty sure Café Chenille, which is higher end, three times the price, and has very good specialty ice cream, is actually a direct subsidiary of Caterpillar Candies. The Hive is another mysterious building. I don't know what they're all about either, but apparently you need a special membership card to get in. And if you think the wonky building to the right of it is a bit weird, that's because it's the city's art museum. 
They try to have a variety of works from such people as Vincent van Moth, Michelangelo, William Termite, and Mantisse, but a lot of their permanent collection is modern and abstract. Public transit can be a hassle on the best of days, but for the residents of Bug City, the Catter bus is especially unreliable. It shows up late, goes down whatever streets it feels like, and if you let it get too close to your prized begonias, it will eat them. And maybe also your hat. That said, it's also the easiest way for school kids to get to the Hermit Library without having to walk for like 10 minutes. No thank you. On the way there, it also passes by the Sugar Cube Disco where patrons can spend a night of dancing before taking the Catter bus home. Provided they're sober. BCTC, the Bug City Transit Committee, has a very strict policy on drunk people not being allowed on the Catter bus due to the very real possibility of them falling off and getting trampled by a hundred tiny legs. Fortunately for the disco drunks, Pizza Papillon is an all-night establishment, so they can at least get some good food while they wait for their bodies to recover. The nearby pancake restaurant, named Splat, which serves as food on fly swatters and promises that no bugs were harmed in the making of your breakfast, is closed between 4pm and 7am. When they're open though, just like the pizza place, they do deliver. The Dirt Arcade boasts some of the world's finest virtual reality games, including such hits as I Am Worm, Pew Pew Sting Beetle, and Millipede vs Centipede, 900 Legs Under the Flea. Many people make a day of it, spending hours at the arcade before wandering over to Spider and Fly Horror House, where half an hour of running through spiderwebs and dodging pincers gives them just the adrenaline kick they need to burn off some of the energy they had pent up from playing video games all day. If they tire themselves out though, the Mossy Rock Theater is just a few steps away. Infrastructure is well maintained in Bug City. Unlike many urban places, Bug City boasts no potholes year-round due to the eco-friendly nature of their methods of transport. Though riding around on a cyclometus dike or a ladybug might take a little longer than your conventional cars, it is also a lot lighter on the roads, making for surprisingly low tax rates despite a high standard of living. It is, however, recommended that you place a tracking collar on your vehicle, as they have a tendency to wander out of the parking lots and, on a few occasions, have crawled all the way across the river. Finding a place to live in Bug City can be difficult. Though there are a few houses sandwiched between the taller buildings and students have plenty of space at the log dormitory, most people live in the outskirts of the city. For a lucky few though, there's Bug Apartments, which not only is a beautiful turquoise blue, but also has roof access to the Butterfly Airlifting Service, which while not necessarily more reliable than the Catter bus, is certainly more fun and far less likely to give you a concussion. Should you manage to acquire one anyway though, the Broom Hospital past the Entertainment District has you covered. If the disco and the arcade don't have quite the noises you're looking for on a Friday night, try crossing over the river to check out the live venue. The city's very own Bug Street Boys will be playing there this week, and for the summer only, we have Mr. Mosquito flying in from his tour with some catchy beats that will really get under your skin. Okay, I think at this point I've said something about basically everything, though I did miss a few that are worth mentioning. Across the street from the pizza place is the Dragonfly Bar and Grill, which has the best garden burger this side of the yard. To the left of it is the Stag Party. Don't be fooled by the name though, all are welcome at this clubhouse. Street space is limited, but feel free to park your beetle on the walls during your visit. Just remember to take them back after. If you have a lot of stuff that you want to put somewhere else, but your puny human arms are too weak to get it there, try calling Beetle Moving Co. just across from the live venue. Their employees will wrap your things in a big old ball and roll it to wherever you like. Residents of Bug Apartments didn't need their services though, because they all pop next door to the Buzz Gym to beef up their arms. Speaking of arms, that guy in the leaf canoe must have some really good ones to be paddling against the current like that. Rumor has it he does this every Friday and waves at the kids on the dragonfly seesaw and the other park fixtures. And I don't know what's up with that butterfly on the bottom left. It could be some sort of airplane thing or maybe a building. Who can say? I certainly can't. Finally, if the hubbub of the city and the bright firefly streetlights get to be too much, Head on over to the Hermit Library and just keep going for a relaxing walk in the woods. The forest is deep and poisonous, so you could basically go forever if you wanted to. Those of you who might one day want to come back are recommended to stick to the trails at all times and not follow any voices you may hear on the wind. Yeah, okay, I don't really have much else to say about this except that my hand was really tired by the time I was done with this. Initially, I was only going to do the center block, but then I went, eh, let's do the bit across the street. 
and then it turned into the pit across the other street, and before I knew it I had a handful of ink smudges and a sheet full of really tiny people. I didn't pay too much attention to color schemes when I was painting, so it ended up really bright and noisy, which I think kind of works for this. With the only traffic being pedestrians and bugs, walking around outside can be pretty quiet actually. And then it was 2 in the morning and I was finally done. And here's the finished piece. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.